Okay, this is a tutorial on uh, how to do the trends, okay? Now, the trends look very easy, especially after the fact, uh, but actually getting a trend right is a very difficult thing. In fact, when we do Forex Target Traders, we spend the first three and a half to four hours on doing nothing but learning how to trend. And the reason it's so important is unless we know the trend, we'll probably be on the wrong side of the trade, number one. And number two, we can't even know where to find the targets. So in an uptrend, we're looking for targets up above us. In a downtrend, we'd be looking for targets down below us. And if you get the trend wrong, you're totally wrong. All right. So uh, a couple things before we actually do it. Uh, we uh, proact tr uh, traders took a, an approach that was a little different than what most people do, is because we recognize that since the trend is totally subjective, that if we put a hundred people in a room, we would get 98 versions of the trend. All right. So we had to find a way that we could kind of close the gap on that. And so when we build our charts. This moving average you see on a 10-minute wild card tells you the trend, all right? It comes from the 240-minute world, okay? Trends, by the way, are only found on a 240-minute chart. So what we've done is we've brought the 240-minute trend down here, and it's this moving average, okay? Now, this is the, the, the trend on the 60-minute chart, okay? Now, if the 240 and the 60 are both going up, that's how we define the desert, okay? Then going back into the desert, this is the desert area. If we went back into the desert, we're coming back into the desert here, we would be going counter trend. But going away from the desert, those are the moves that work. Why? Because the trend is up. And so these are the ones that move. So very visually on the charts, a setup is designed to keep you in a good trend trade uh, and a, in a good trend. All right. So you can see that right there. And now we'll take this up to a, to a 240 world where the trend is actually found. All right. Now, when you open up a chart, here's the way some people will tell you. In the, uh, you know, if you, you know, gravitate to some people, they'll tell you, okay, uh, you know, this is the trend right here. They'll be looking and say, see how that's a beautiful trend right here, and that's the way it's taught. Uh, that's wrong. So. Uh, let me just get rid of that real quick <laughs> so you don't see it very much. But that's the way most people are taught to trend. Okay, So here's what we need to understand about the trends. All we care about is this piece right here because this is what they're doing now. This is what they did last week right in here. This is what they did the week before right in here. Okay, So this is what they're doing now and this is what we got to trend. And this is what we got to trade in this movement right here. All right. So anytime you're up here and you've got this V-shaped type thing, what you first thing you want to do is make sure that the old trend is gone. And you can see the old trend is gone. That was a downtrend. As long as we were down below this line, we were sellers. We were sellers. But right here, we became a buyer. Okay. So uh, we'll leave that line on there just for now. So how do we do the trend? All right. So let's go back here. I'm going to make these candles a little bigger so you can see them. Now, I use the channel key. I don't use linear regression. The reason I do that is because linear regression would form fit this. See, if I go like this and it will say, there, that's the trend, okay? That may or may not be the trend. So I don't like that because it's inclusive. It, 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 the amount of candles you click is what it's going to do. So I like to control the trend, so I use the channel key. And the definition of a trend is three, and an uptrend is three higher lows. Oops, got the wrong tool, sorry. It's three higher lows. So I got one, two, and three right here. So those that's the lower part of the trend. Now I go to the highest candle right up here, and I go drag back here, and I've got to attach this to a resistance. So I have to have a support and a resistance. All right. And once I click that, then the heart line of the channel has got to prove that it actually is the correct trend. And if you get the correct trend, you'll see that the heart line is going to be proven over and over and over again right so that's how you do it right very simple uh, and now we can count on this trend and because the trend is subjective you have to be able to count on it so that's one of the rules of trending is make sure that you use something that's got a heart line in the middle of it and that you draw it and it proves that trend is right there okay so there's one on that side right there let's do the let's just go uh, find another one here we'll go over to uh, that was the euro so let's go over to the 10 minute chart here in the British pound all right we take everything off of here all right so here I am on a 10 minute chart we can see that this is trending up this is trending up so we got a an idea that the currency is probably trending to the upside we haven't proven it because we have to go to a 240 chart all right so we go up here to the 240 chart and once again, we're given a similar look, okay? And so what we have to do is make sure that the old trend is gone. 
and what's the old trend coming right down through here all right lower lows and once we popped out here we popped out back in and now we're bouncing okay and so we now know that we're in an uptrend it's proven that the downtrend does no longer exist so now we'll take the last part remember it's the last part and we have to have higher lows okay now in this case this becomes the low and it's not near the trend line but it is a higher low than this one see and, and then this one higher low higher low we come across the top and this is why it's so subjective because every trend may give you a different set of information and if we click it on here I can tell you right now the heart line is probably not going to be proven oh, I guess it is so uh, let's just make it bigger and we'll see if it really is okay so let's take a look and see what it shows us All right. and we see the heart line there we see the heart lines proven right along there and right now we're running right along the heart line up here. So yes, we can use that as a trend. Now, I want you to see this angle. 45 degrees is a good trend. Anything greater than 45 degrees is not a good trend. So how do you remember? All right, so let me show you a little example here that will make sense. All right, you look on your watch. And a, a currency that is moving from 8 to 2 on your watch is 45 degrees if you're in an uptrend. In a downtrend, it's 10 to 4. All right, so as long as you've got trends like that, going up or down then you can count that that's a pretty good trend right and what is the problem here all right well here's the thing this is not sustainable that's greater than 45 degrees so what do they do they come back down that's the greater than 45 degrees down and so then they come back up that's greater than 45 degrees so when we come back down here and we do this guess what there's the 45 degrees so these moves that are up down and up and down are greater than 45 degrees that's why they cannot sustain those moves all right so it's very very important that as you look and you see you're at the top of a trend and you've got something that's greater than 45 degrees it's not going to stay there it's going to come back down or it's going to go sideways one or the other all right let's take a look and do another one here let's go over to the dollar cad here okay now we can see that the moving averages on the 10 minute chart are going down so we got a hint that we're probably going down we go to the 240 chart we can see there's the old trend that's gone right so we'll take that off we can see that we're out of that so now what are we doing we're doing this trend to the downside so how do we do it once again we're coming across here now this is going to be an interesting one I'm glad this is happening you see if I connect these right like this like that okay you can immediately see something okay that's too steep right now I've taken the top and that's too steep going down to the second spot right here so that tells me that trend is not correct so what is the trend I won't use the top they've adjusted this and now if we go from here to here and we go out to here and we come over to there let's see and it looks pretty good okay 45 degrees so we're fine and you can see the heart line is proven right here and the heart line is being proven right here it came short of it up here okay but if we move this up to here as you can see then we wouldn't have any heart line at all so that's how we can prove that that's a good trend all right so they adjusted the trend because it was too steep immediately going down right and that's uh, quite often especially during the beginning of the week they will have to adjust them to get them into 45 degree angles okay all right so now we can see up on the 240 chart that in the big picture this is a down move in a big uptrend okay but we can't but down on the 240 as we looked on the two down on the 10 minute chart that 240 chart that 240 was telling us see how it's running right along the uh, the uh, trend line here see how it's going down they're very close to each other see that once again here's the desert we need to be going away from the desert and that means that we have a very high statistical probability of a great trade and of course you can see that right here I mean this is a you know how, how do you like that one there's a great one for a one two three almost four almost 115 pips there great trade to the downside okay all right, knowing the trend because you would have done that before this move you can see it comes from way back over here you would have known you're only a seller in a downtrend you're only a seller in an uptrend you're only a buyer okay now when you become an advanced trader you can do both of them okay but how long does that take probably three years so you know put it on your schedule not to do that for another three years all right let's go over to the Swissy and see what we got here once again we got a very similar this is going down okay so you know we got a hint that we might be going down we go up to the 240 chart and we can see that we have we need to make sure that the old trend is gone the one that was going up so let's 
market there. You see we came down here, we hooked back up, and now we're going to the downside. All right. So now we'll put the trend on to the downside. And we can see right here, if we go like this, across there, you know, we are making lower highs, and that becomes a trend. And you say, well, how did you know to do that? Why didn't you do this? Because if I did this, it's too steep. See? That's too steep. It's almost standing up. Right? So I know I can't do that. So I know to go across these two tops, find the bottom, and attach this to a support and a resistance. Support and resistance. Trends are not, they have to be attached to a support or a resistance. Okay? And it'll take you a while because initially you'll probably go in for this one. You'll go, okay, that's good. I want that one right there. And then, of course, you see that you, then you outside the trend here. That's because you didn't have it right. All right? So it's very important that you get this right. All right? Let's do another one. All right? Let's go to the yen. Okay, uh, you know the yen's kind of a yucky place right now because it's in a, it just had an intervention, so we'll leave that alone because that's not really good. So let's go to the uh, Aussie. Here we are on a 10-minute chart, and you can see that we're trending up on a 10-minute world. So let's see what happens when we go up to the 240 world. Okay, now make sure that the old trend is gone. All right, there's the downtrend. This is where we broke out. We're good to go. We're going to the upside. All right. So remember, we only care about this last piece. So we're going across here. We're going to go across here to that second piece right there, up to the highest candle, and we've got to attach this to a support or a resistance. Here we go. Let's make these bigger so you can see it. Right? Nice and big. Right? So, remember, this is attached to here, attached here, support and resistance. Do they know where the heart line is? 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 Yes, they do. So I can count on that trend. Notice I didn't try to include these right here. Don't be inclusive of it, okay? Just use what the what the market is showing you, and you'll find that you've got it pretty well. All right? Actually, I should redo that. I might need to be inclusive on that one. Hold on. Now that I made the candles bigger, oh, I don't know. I actually need to go across this one right here and then go up there. All right, so that's even better. All right? Once again, notice how the heart line is proven. I'm not trying to include those. I'm taking this piece right here and this piece right here. And that tells them what to do here. They propped out and they went out of the trend and they go, whoa, whoa, whoa we're not supposed to be out yet. Okay, back in they go and right back up. So that's called a false breakout. All right? Now, most people will try to tell you to include that. You don't want to be inclusive. Otherwise, you'll never see a breakout. All right? Let's do one that goes from uh, uh, an up move to a down move. Okay, so uh, let's see. I think the euro yen will do that for us. All right, so let's go up to the 240 chart, uh, and we can see. Yeah, there's the old trend. Okay, so here's the old trend on here. All right, you can see how I, I had it here from here to here. Notice how the heart line gets proven over and over again. Okay, so as long as we're in this down move right here, we're a seller. We're a seller. And over here is where we're trying to sell again. And guess what? We don't. We bounce out. Okay? So now, see, if you if, if we took it from here to here, and we don't care about that, don't try to include that, this line right here will does just the fine right there. And that gives us the point down here where we'll see the breakout and know we're no longer a seller. And that's a very important piece of information. Okay? So at this point here, then we would start the process of going to the upside. All right, we can see I have one, two, three, going up to the highest wick, and I've got to attach this to a support, or in this case, a resistance. All right, so if I go down here, I don't have any support or resistance because I don't have two to the left and two to the right, so I've got to go all the way up to here. All right, now we've just barely gotten to the heart line here. Okay, so we can see that there's still lots of up move here because inside this area, let me make it big so you can see, there are no resistances. Remember, a resistance is one candle that sticks up with two to the left and two to the right. Okay, and we got lots of places where we have one candle and two to the right, but we but we don't have one on the left. See, we don't have two of these lower here. All right, so that can't be it. We go down to this one right here. There's only one lower. Okay, then this one's higher, so that can't be it. Go down to this one. There's only one lower. Then this is higher, so that can't be it. So the only resistance and the only support are these right here. All right, so. Get, make sure you notice that because that's a big, big deal right there. If you miss that, you're going to try to form fit it. All right? And that's why you'll miss this move right here. Because see what most people would do, they would do this. Okay, oh, I see what it's doing. Let me uh, redraw it here. And, and they'll, they won't use rules. They'll just say, I'm just going to 
cold cloth at the bottom, and you know it looks like it's going right across, you know, right along in here. Okay, there's the trend. And see, then they they miss this move here, and they don't understand why. Well, because they had the trend wrong. That's why. See, so always make sure a trend has to be anchored, going up by a support and a resistance, going down by a resistance and a support. All right. So uh, that should help you a little bit, hopefully. Uh, you know, for us, uh, it's very simple. When we, uh, when we get these breakouts right in here, let's just scroll back here. So see, right here, we now know that we're probably, uh, that, that could have been a false breakout, but when it breaks back out again, we now know that we're going to the upside. So for us, we just simply click the HSI, and that will give us targets to trade to. All right, and we can see these targets ahead of time before they ever happen. So we now know that if we break here, our next target is the R5. And boom, right up to it. All right, and if we go and we break to the next one, we're going up to this one right here. Will we get there? I don't know. It's pretty far away, but let's see. Oh, gee, went right to it. Wonder if they knew it. See how easy that becomes? You can keep this very, very simple. One of the secrets of trading, folks, is keep it simple and not get it complicated. Most traders, when they're trading, think that they need more, and the reality is you need less. All right. Especially when you're struggling. If you're struggling, your 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 brain is saying you're not getting it. You need a new trainer. You need more education. You need to download another ebook. You need to go into some other class. You need to learn a whole new technique. You need to, and none of that is true. Okay. You need to concentrate on what works, and it's very simple. Find the trend. Trade with the trend. Wait for your trade setup in the trend, and trade to a target, and quit scalping. Very simple. All right, hope that helps everybody, and uh, we'll talk with you soon.